Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, April 18th, 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2024. Solar indices have just hit 227, the highest SFI since January of 2023. Will we have a second spike in the solar cycle? No one knows. 4.3 in Bodville, California, rattling nerves. Keep calm. It's boom time. Damage reported after Thursday morning severe thunderstorm warning in Kansas City Metro, including roofs being ripped off and trees down. Significant damage reported in northern Idaho after severe thunderstorms roar through the Great Lakes. Damage from hail, gusty winds, and tornadoes was reported throughout the eastern Great Lakes, but the greatest concentration of impacts appear to be in northern Ohio. Let's take a look at some video here from Portage County. And his family, they're still trying to process what's left of their home. First thing popped my, my head is my truck was gone. I was like, oh my God, where's my truck? And I'm looking around, and then I see that over here. Just amazed how that truck ended up there. Yeah, that, I'm just amazed. Though it may not be salvageable. I wanted to remodel, but I didn't want to do it this way. They're just happy everyone's okay. As long as we could just keep the land and fix everything that we can, and just, he still has a home. The field of debris is extensive. Now we're at the backside of where that mobile home was. And if you take a look behind me, take a look at this barn, the roof gone, pieces all over the place. This is the site that so many are seeing. Now we did speak to the sheriff's office and we got an update on power outages. They told us that just about everyone has power back except for four homes. So come back to us at six and we'll update you and show you more of that devastation caused by the tornado. Our hearts, our thoughts, and prayers go out to those affected from these storms. It's only the beginning of spring, folks. This will continue. Severe thunderstorms likely across the Ozarks and lower Ohio Valley. Severe thunderstorms capable of producing damaging wind gusts, large hail, and a few tornadoes are likely to develop this afternoon from parts of the lower Ohio Valley into the Southern Plains. An enhanced risk, level 3 of 5. Outlook has been issued. Further north, widespread rain showers are expected across portions of the Great Lakes and the Northeast as this storm moves east. Let's take a quick look at the GFS model and show you what we're talking about here. There's the storm in the center of the U.S. It's going to be moving east overnight into the Northeast by morning and into the weekend and then offshore. A very weak system. Uh, as far as weather patterns uh, for the next few days, a little bit of potential for severe weather popping up here Saturday night into Sunday for Texas, but that quickly moves offshore. Very quiet pattern, as I've said, until we get to the end of April here. A little system moving off the east here and then some more precipitation for the west. Let's take a look at the total snowfall on the GFS and not much to be seen. The next few days here is Friday and Saturday, Sunday, and into the end of the weekend. The only snow really for the U.S. is going to be for the West, mostly northern Colorado, and then more snow coming into the Pacific Northwest at the end of the weekend. Here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Could be some more snow for the Northeast, but overall, a very low snow pattern. Seismic update. We did kick off the show showing you the 4.3 in Bodfish, California, probably rattling some nerves. We also had some activity at the New Madrid, which has gone off the map in the last few hours. Uh, the most interesting quake of the day is a 5.6 in Loreto, Mexico, uh, up at the surface. So I'm sure that also rattled some nerves. Overall, low-level activity worldwide and no other quakes of note. At least 11,000 have now been evacuated after Indonesia's Ruang volcano erupted yesterday five times over a 24-hour period in spectacular fashion. 
In Indonesia, leave homes near erupting volcano and airport closes due to ash danger, but I think it has reopened. And the reason I say this is because as of this morning, the first post-eruption images emerged with a quiet Ruang, albeit missing a lot of the top of that mountain. And everything that was living on it now covered or burned away. Ruan Volcano, Sulawesi, and Sangihe Islands in Indonesia, alert level has been raised to four as massive umbrella cloud was triggered by the eruption. About the volcanic lightning phase that we showed you last night, almost 4,000 instances of lightning have been detected within the eruption plume since a day and a half ago, and that's pretty spectacular. Space weather for April 19th, as we kicked off the beginning of the show, solar indices are the highest since last year when our last spike occurred. They need to rise a little higher to get above that spike, but at a good level now after we just kicked off a moderate duration M2.2 solar flare, probably from this active region, 3647. The expansive complex of sunspots in the southeast quadrant now consists of five separate active regions. The central section of the group was split in half with newly assigned 3647. Deemed to be its own individual region, the center of this magnetic mess continues to be the main driver of solar activity Thursday with a number of low-level M flares. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet, and, well, we're hoping that the sun maybe produces some more CMEs so we get some geomagnetic activity down here on Earth. The reason the solar flux is so high is take a look at all of these sunspots, albeit all tiny pinpricks, but there are a lot of them. Now, aren't there? <laughs> here is Discover Solar Wind. You can see that we're barely above 400 kilometers per second. No precipitable amount of change of anything to bring geomagnetic conditions. Scientists navigate the paradox of extreme cold events in a warming world. Sounds like bull dookie to me. <laughs> According to Copernicus Climate Change Service, February 2024 was the warmest February ever recorded globally. However, North America, Asia, and parts of Europe experienced record-breaking cold temperatures. In some places, such as China's Mohe and Russia's Yaktusk temperatures dip to life-threateningly low levels. Alarmingly, this juxtaposition of increasing temperatures amidst increasing coldness pushes the lunacy even further. Now, apparently they didn't get the memo. What climate realists have shown is that all this warming is fake and it's based on the urban heat island effect where they just keep moving thermometers deeper into the cities, recording ever higher temperatures to, well, perpetuate the narrative. When in reality, in remote regions where record cold temperatures are being recorded, they're not doing that. And they're recording dangerously cold temperatures. Now, if you didn't know, the cold kills nine times more people than the heat, and we should be very worried that they have no idea what they're talking about. Just like here, NASA's, NASA's Fermi mission sees no gamma rays from nearby supernova. When all the while, we've been told that gamma rays come from supernova. But they witnessed one. On May 18th, 2023, a supernova erupted in the nearby pinwheel galaxy Messier 101 located about 22 million light years away in the constellation Ursa Major. The event, named SN 2023 IXF, is the most luminous nearby supernova discovered since Fermi launched in 2008. But guess what? They found no cosmic rays coming from the supernova. Yeah. The glaring problems with the standard model of cosmology, well, is right in your face. What a disgrace. Here's more of that disgrace before your very eyes. The universe may be dominated by particles that break causality 
and move faster than light, according to a new paper. <laughs> it just keeps getting more fairy tale fantastical. With the nature of the universe's two most elusive components up for debate, physicists have proposed a radical idea. Invisible particles called tachyons, just like black holes, which break causality and move faster than light may dominate the cosmos. Yes, it's not dark matter or dark energy. It's invisible tachyons that go faster than the speed of light. That's what it is. Bird flu jumping to humans is an enormous concern according to, well, the least reliable group on earth, the WHO. As the virus continues to spread to new species, the World Health Organization fears it is moving closer to people. Soylent green is people. You want to know how to survive and thrive in the coming times, which appears to be World War III? Well, you need to know how to detoxify your soil because you're going to be growing your own food. And it's not as hard as you might think. If your neighbors use pesticides and the spray over or the aerosol is real, or even if you live in an area that you think the soil may be toxic, you don't need to replace your soil. Um... And this detox program works for all types of contamination, including preservatives and treated lumber, creosote and railroad ties, heavy metals from iron supplements and fertilizers, toxic pesticides like azastrobilin, permethrin, MSMA, Roundup, 7, Manage, Raid, Orthene. And the list goes on. Digging the soil out and hauling it off is not the answer. There's a much easier and more effective solution, and you're looking at it. It's fine textured activated carbon and humate. They're messy, but they're highly effective as part of a detox program. And we're going to link you to this paper below, this article from the Dallas Morning News, and you should all bone up on it. It's just one page. You can stop the contamination assault by telling your neighbors to stop spraying. <laughs> the violators need to be put on notice that they are responsible for the cost to fix the problem. Next, you apply a fine textured activated charcoal or humate product. It's best to mix these products into a watery spray and drench the entire problem area. The rest of the ingredients to the detox, which includes garret juice mixture, with orange oil and D-limonene will shore up all of those heavy metals and toxins and they will activate the biome and the subsurface to start eating them. And bioremediation will begin. That is science. And once your soil is detoxified, you want to grow some heirloom vegetable seeds to survive and thrive in the coming times. And the cheapest place and the best way to do that is to come to the Alliance of Native Seed Keepers and get the cheapest seeds on the planet, $2 per pack. If you buy more than 25 bucks, free shipping and add ORP 2024 for 10% off. 209 varieties available, open pollinated, non-GMO seeds that you can seed save from and continue the process of seed sovereignty. Oh, yeah, it helps the channel, too. Bad news. Iran threatens to target Israeli nuke facilities. World War III much? Middle East is on the precipice of a big war. Now, before the war ends the world, why not come out to the Crow Canyon petroglyph tour where you can survive and thrive in the middle of nowhere where even if World War III is occurring, we won't know. The best-known collection of 16th to 18th century Navajo petroglyphs I have ever personally witnessed are here. And Rex Bear and I are going to guide you around the area with special guests and surprises the last Sunday of May. Hey, hey. Sunday, May 26th, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Crow Canyon. We're meeting in the Salmon Ruins parking lot. 
Tickets are flying off the shelves. Well, there's not that very many of them. So go get them. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned. We need your help to grow. It is real. I will show you the data. Our videos are not getting out there. Please hit the thumbs up. Helps with the algorithm and be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Yeah.